thought this would be fun to watch with chat. I'm curious what you guys think. Fellas, how did streamers ruin gaming? What did I do? Did people watch me play Tekken and say, wow, he got the purple in four days? I give up. Did streamers really ruin gaming, or are you just trash? By the end of this video, you'll have an answer on if streaming really ruined gaming or not and i saw this tweet right here that says dominating blue collar workers in battle bit if you don't know what battle bit <laughs> is well it's basically like battlefield and roblox okay i don't like flexing in battle bit i don't really like that i remember this discourse do you i don't remember a battle bit discourse that's kind of funny i do like that whenever the skill-based matchmaking argument comes up i always fight on the side of no skill-based matchmaking and i understand why people want it but this is pretty much the whole clip there's leaning in battle bit? Why are we flexing? Yeah, pretty much that guy bit. is just straight up dominating people. Like that that's pretty much it. And uh -huh. I saw a quote tweet that said, Esports ruined casual gaming. Now I know the whole title of this video is well, like something along the lines of how streamers ruined gaming, but I'm gonna put streamers and esports kinda in the same category. Stop. Dude, no, I'm not no, it's over at that point, I think. I think I'm out there. It's not the same. I didn't do anything. I'm not esports. I say that because with streaming, you kind of got to either be good at a game or funny. And with esports, you got to be good at a game. So I'm going to put them both together because th they're pretty similar, if I do say so myself. But to really. You shouldn't say so. Is it over at that point? Is it already knocked out? It's already done. Oh, hold on. Let's hear him out. I, I think this is already. On a shaky foundation, but wait, wait, hold we on. We understand this. Wait. We got to go all the way back to 2018. Let's go back the to Fortnite 2018. Boom. Let's hear him out. Before Fortnite hold was on. this cringe cash grab that hold pretty on. much just preyed on little kids for money. It was a game that nobody truly knew how to play and everyone had fun with it. I mean, back in 2018, every single human being was talking about Fortnite. I mean, back then you had Fortnite meme Fortnite's pages. Big, every right? single human being was posting their wins. People were doing emotes IRL. Fortnite move. Holy shit, that kid is talented. Do it again. Oh! Fortnite moves! <laughs> Wanna feel old? <laughs> this kid doing Fortnite emotes is now 30 years old. Back Painful. then, Twitch was like pretty niche, but I'd say that Fortnite made Twitch more mainstream. And you may be asking, why did people yeah, go to Drake Twitch and not him, right? YouTube? Well, the thing about YouTube is that a lot of YouTube videos are edited, and some people, they may be good on YouTube, but it's like on Twitch. Twitch is live, Twitch is raw. So if you lose, like, people are gonna see you lose, and if you win, people are gonna see you win. And that's why Twitch was so popular, because you could see high-level gameplay in real time. Dude, I've talked to so many YouTubers that say that they don't want to stream because, one, they're very bad at a game, and two, they get really mad. <laughs> So I have some friends who, who are YouTubers and they like are game people, but they don't want to, they get really mad if they lose in the moment. That's a plus though. Not if you, uh, only if you are funny mad. There's funny mad and then uncomfortable mad. Killing the vibe mad, you know? Some streamers that a bunch of people were watching back then was people like Myth, Ninja, Dr. Lupo, Nick Merckx. The whole Ninja versus Myth argument was like the biggest topic in school. This guy is young. Well, that's the thing is like, I, I don't know how much of perspective this guy can have of like, were you alive for TF2? TF2 is my, uh, TF2 is my benchmark for like, when the casual experience like changed forever. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't think of a more gleeful game. I remember getting very mad in TF2 before because I played Spy and t like there were like four Pyros on the enemy team and I got very mad. <laughs> but like generally speaking, I think it was it was hard to get mad at TF2 for the most part. I mean, did y'all see how some of these Fortnite teams were getting down? Bro, I'm telling you. If I had to crank a few 90s to be a freaking Fortnite pro back then, I, I probably would. And that's exactly where the downfall of gaming happened. Wait, is he old enough to know the downfall of gaming? We're just gonna keep hearing these arguments, right? Because, like, we heard the same thing from people going from the Super Nintendo to, like, the GameCube. Fortnite used to be this game where you try to win by doing these creative strats. <laughs> wait, we're using, wait, we're using Fortnite as... The example. Well, I thought I thought we were gonna be like you know, uh, th like old COD, like old Call of Duty was like you know old Call of Duty was all about fun, running and gunning, not caring if you lose. We're using Fortnite as the example. Fortnite is the Zoomers' Dark Souls and video essays. Wait, I can't. I didn't know enough time had passed. 
Fortnite used to be about soul. Yeah, I didn't know enough time had passed for us now to circle back on ourselves. And Fortnite used to have soul. Fortnite with the banana peel guy, soul. Fortnite with Darth Vader, soulless. Base, building a huge metal base, or maybe even camping in a bush. But then it turned into this huge sweat fest when people saw that you could make abnormal amounts of money from this game. Back then, if you shot at a dude, they would probably start shooting at you back like they wouldn't even build. But now, if you shoot at somebody in Fortnite, they're building a whole freaking skyscraper hotel with Wi-Fi. It's this was my experience from day one, by the way. That was my experience from day one. I don't think this is true at all. I played Fortnite and I hated it because I just wanted to run and gun. And the second that I heard a shot, just it, not a good build, but just a wall, even one wall. Also say that that's kind of just time, like with time, people get better. But my point is that everyone's playing games to be the best rather than to just have fun with their boys. Ah. Everyone is playing to be watched on Twitch or watched on YouTube. I mean, you ever play a game and you get killed by somebody with a TTV gamer tag? Okay, those guys gotta go. Yeah, we should we should ban those guys. He's spitting you on You go to that. their Twitch and they're not streaming at all. Yeah, they're, they're just, just not even just live. That's like everyone strange. is just playing for that top spot because in that top spot you can make content out of it and with that content comes a whole lot of money i remember back then games wouldn't really get sweaty until like two or three weeks after release but now games are sweaty off the rip it can be five days away from call of duty coming out and you already got a dude making a video saying best class setup 2023 <laughs> mw3 all right he is kind of he's kind of spinning on this one no he's right about this but I think that that is a small subset of a community. That's like, yeah, I don't know if everybody's on this, right? That's a content mill thing. Yeah, I think that's not too crazy. There's always gonna wanna be people that optimize. I actually think, and this is kind of, I'm getting ahead of myself because I was gonna bring this up later. I think this might be why Helldivers 2 is so refreshing. Because Helldivers 2 is like, I don't know about you guys, but the having the no PvP aspect, just the PvP element, makes it so much more like, I'm not competing with anybody. You know what I mean? I, I don't get mad when my teammates die, I don't get frustrated, it's like, it's, it's fine. And if I lose everything, I don't care. But now, apparently, people are min-maxing so much in Helldivers 2 that if you don't run the right build, they'll kick you out. I don't know if that's true, but I did hear that. But I also wonder if that's like this guy where it's like, wow, people are kicking me out for not running the best build when they're actually just actively throwing and not playing the game. Lethal Company? Yeah, but Lethal Company's different, I think, because... How do I explain this? I think Lethal Company is inherently a more social game. I could play Helldivers 2 alone and still have a good time without communicating with everybody because there's so much to do. Lethal Company, if I'm playing alone, I still gotta talk to the other guys. There's no random matchmaking. Oh, really? Even, even without that, I would have to like join a lobby. That's different. I could play Helldivers 2 alone and still have fun. It won't be as fun, but I could do it. It's like, bro, the game hasn't even released. It can be two weeks before 2K comes out, and a dude already has the best build. It makes no sense. And when the game comes out, people are only going to play the meta, because when you only play the meta, you can win more. And when you win more, you can get up to that top rank. And when you get up to that top rank, you can stream, create content from it. More people are going to watch you because you're up high on the leaderboards. Ah. And now everyone's just playing the same, because everyone's just trying to be the best. To be I mean... Yes, terrible example. No, I mean, I kind of I, I kind of see what he's saying, though, because, like, yeah, people do do this, but it's going to always be a small subset of the competitive, sort of competitively minded people. The reason the reason that I am uh, sympathetic to this guy's vibes, uh, there's a game mode, okay? There's a game mode in League of Legends called Ultra Rapid Fire. Ultra Rapid Fire, the point of this game mode is supposed to be stupid and for fun and it's ridiculous and everybody goes crazy and everybody has moves and everything. The problem is that the game has become so optimized that you only see like f 10 characters total. This is supposed to be the for fun queue and everybody's picking it and, and everybody's picking the same stuff because they saw somebody else do it. At what point... I think it's on the devs to make a game where playing the game in various ways is more fun than winning. And I think that's a very hard thing to do. They are having fun. It's fun to do that a few times, but not forever. Level one Earth Strat. The enemy team will always go top and try to fight you. You cannot uh -huh. fight as Alistar, Ilawi, level one enemy as fucking 
sort of jinx Yumi vibe. Like, you're not gonna win that. I think they win this, actually. I think this guy's a pussy. I think Blue Team wins this. Leave Earth to the real gamers. Anyway, what I was saying is I think it's up to the devs to design game systems that are fun to engage with beyond just winning. And that's hard to do. Back then, you would play games for the fun because there was really no money involved. But now it's like every single human being is trying to become the top streamer. And it's like, bro, like, where's the fun in that? If you win a freaking Fortnite tournament or you just win a freaking Call of Duty tournament, dog, you're honestly set. You can buy your mom a freaking mansion. Yeah, but like the audience has scaled with the money. Like, pe less people were playing games back then. Like, the numbers... Like, I went to Brawl tournaments. Our Nationals had 300 people. So it's like, that that was our big event of the year, had 300 people. So it's like, the, 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 the numbers scale with the audience, which means, yeah, there are more competitive players, but there's more people overall. Three million, I'm pretty sure, off of Fortnite. That is wild. That is insane money. Another thing about gaming after streaming is that games that aren't even sweaty are becoming sweaty. For example, Fall Guys. I remember back in 2020, <laughs> every single human being was playing Fall Guys during quarantine. And I just thought to myself, what do you gain from being a sweat in Fall Guys? Twitch rivals money. $1,500 per player. What do you gain? Like, I understand you're trying to show people how Crowns. to- Crowns! Nobody was making strats or anything. People were just hopping in, having fun, just playing like headless chickens, you know? I feel yeah. like games die out quicker when you're making all these strats and stuff on how to win when it's not even like- I Obviously, yes, the goal in Fall Guys is to win, but I feel like the whole point of that game is to enjoy the journey. Like, when you're only focused on trying to get crowns in that game, the game becomes less fun, but- because you're just focusing on the destination. I mean, he's he's right, but I think it's the, the it's inherent to the nature of these games where like there has to be a winner. No, I get what he's saying. I get it. Like imagine playing Fall Guys now. You know what I mean? It's it's you you're never going to win. You are never going to win if you play Fall Guys now. Now somebody would argue, "Okay, well do, if you care so much then you should be competitive and you should try a little bit harder and try to learn how to win." That's the argument. Do you want to win or do you want to have fun? Dude has a point, but it's severely limited in his perspective of things. Yeah, I, I get what he's saying. I think he's just articulated poorly. Yeah. Imagine coming home from a long day of school or work and you're getting sweated on in Fall Guys. Imagine you're <laughs> over there just trying to chill. You know, you're on this little cutesy game that's like Wipeout. And out of nowhere, TTV Try Hard for Life literally just claps you. That's, that's my favorite thing, though. I, for some reason, my favorite genre of game is optimizing the bullshit. I think that's great. This Mario Baseball, just like Mario Party, like finding the meta in Mario Party is fascinating to me. I love that shit. And it's like, dude, you can't even have fun anymore. Okay, but what's fun? Is winning fun? If winning is fun, learn how to win. Eventually, these arguments always steer toward why don't you let me win? It's, it's like, I get, I, listen, I feel like Sakurai. I'm Sakurai. Maybe we should have tripping. I want other people to win, right? I want other people to win. I want people to have a good time. You don't want people to quit your game. One thing that games have been implementing is this thing called skill-based matchmaking. If you don't know what uh -oh. it is, well, I'll basically <laughs> explain. Think of a lobby where uh -oh. all the top players from a bunch of different games uh -huh. all get into a lobby with each other and go head-to-head. -head. Basically ranked play, but with no bonus rewards or anything. Uh -huh. You just kind of get into a lobby with the best players without getting any specific reward in casual play. And the thing about skill-based matchmaking is that it's unfair because the good players are being punished for being good at the game and it gets to this point where it's like winning feels like a chore rather than actual fun that's not that's not what skill-based matchmaking is man that's not the argument for or against skill-based matchmaking listen i'm so <laughs> pro switch teams yeah he kind of went the other way okay hold on so i'm somebody i'm somebody who actually dislikes skill-based matchmaking and i'm not kidding i don't always like skill-based matchmaking in casual mode and the reason is i'm painted by my experience in league of legends i played league for 10 years and if i come back onto my account now that i haven't played on for three years it's gonna think that i'm still high diamond it's gonna still think that i'm 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 good and i care a lot and i want to win and that's frustrating because then i have to get new accounts so i think that casual play i could understand having a way looser skill based requirement there should be something you shouldn't have like really high prestige guys against new people but there should be like i don't think it should be the same as ranked people play basketball for fun 
doing pickup games at the YMCA. Wow, really? A layup? Wow. I guess you really want to win. <laughs> that does happen, though. I, I, be, I, I actually bet it does. Now that you say that, I didn't really think about it before. Go into, like, a ranked game mode or something. But now, if you're a tryhard, you're going to play every single other tryhard 24-7 just because you're good at the game. Yeah, and that sucks. He's right. Yes. Back then, yes. games like Call of Duty, what they would do, I feel you that. would join He's a lobby. On that. And if you wanted to leave that lobby, you would just leave it. And if you wanted to stay after the game, you would stay. But now, after a game is finished, they just transport you to a whole different lobby with everyone else who also did good. And it's like, now you got to go head to head with all the big dogs just because you won one game. Okay, he's actually kind of spitting on that. Staying in the lobby is a lot of fun. He's actually kind of spitting on that one. That's actually true. Weird edit, but he's actually true on that. When you Staying in the same lobby with the same people was actually kind of fun. That actually, well, I'll give it up for that point. I'll true on that. Bro has not mentioned streamers past minute three. Yeah, we kind of went off the rails on this. Yeah. Yeah, what did I do? We kind of went off the rails on this. Matchmaking ever. That game was borderline unplayable because if you won one game, Good you would names. be playing the freaking Optic roster from freaking 2014 just from winning one game. And another way of games catering to bad players, Fortnite adding bots into their games just so you can feel better about yourself. I mean, Let's be real. It is 2023. Nobody is a default anymore in Fortnite. If you're good, you're being punished, and if you're bad, you're being rewarded. Wait, so I'm confused. Is his argument that... I think it's fine to give people bots, because you're trying to keep them invested. Like, and you make them feel good, because they get to win. Honestly, bots are more of a tutorial than anything. You just fight them, and you learn how to fight, and it's like, okay, well, now I know how to shoot. That's it. See this tweet by Faye Sway that says, The downfall of video games started when kids complained about people being good at the game. I remember when I was a kid and saw a Master Prestige in COD, I didn't tell him to take a shower or go outside. I sent that MF a friend request. Okay, so a competitive player is flaming people for not being competitive enough. Okay. And that's facts. Right. Instead of actually putting- Wait, what? That's facts? Wait, what team is he on? This guy is the Joker. What the fuck? He's chaos. That's facts. I thought he was on the other side. I thought he was. I thought he was gonna be on the other team. Putting in the work to be good. A lot of people just sit there and complain, and now games are kind of catering. What the fuck? Them. What? Wait. What? Wait. What? Putting in the work to be good. What are you talking? What? What side are we on? This guy is two faced. Harvey fucking Dent, man. What the fuck is this? He tricked. Me. Bro tricked me! What the fuck is that? The timeline switch mid video. This dude got a twin. This guy got an identical twin that tricked him. This is like what it's like to watch Factor Opinion. I understand it now. When I used to do Factor Opinion, I would forget my point in the middle of saying it. And I would come up with a completely different one. I get it, man. It's frustrating. Okay, hold on. Let's hear him out. You have been auto balanced to the other team. But one game that I say that kind of bridged the middle ground between the really good players and the really bad players is Street Fighter 6. One thing that Street Fighter- That's a- I didn't expect that. Okay, we play fighting games? That shit came out of nowhere. Okay, hold on. Hold. Fighter 6 did. They added something called modern controls and classic control. Oh, he doesn't know shit. <laughs> He doesn't know he doesn't know the game like the moment he's immediately on the modern controls thing He doesn't know video games. He doesn't know video games. That's okay. That's okay That is all right. It's fine. It just means he doesn't know games. That's fine Classic controls basically you have to do more to push out a combo And yeah. if you do that successfully then that combo does more damage But if you play modern controls you only hit square or something and it'll do a full combo uh -huh. and those combos do less damage So it kind of bridges the gap between good and bad players. It doesn't it does it makes the game better for new players I don't think most people who take the time to learn classic controls will lose the modern controls Pro players can take advantage of it because it's a reaction diff. It's not an execution diff. Modern controls are training wheels. Exactly. And that makes them really fun because you both get to ride training wheels together and look at the sick combos and the cool stuff that you're doing. But if one guy is learning classic controls, he's probably learning how to beat you. He's learning what your character does. He's putting it in more investment, which means he's going to win. Isn't that his argument, though? Putting in the effort to get better means more reward. 
Yeah, that, but that's... But what part of his argument was... His argument before was that you don't want to be sweaty and, and learn a game because it's more fun. Like, you shouldn't try to play to win. So don't learn that stuff. But now it's the opposite. And it's my fault. <laughs> How can this be fixed in, like, games that are, like, FPS or something like that? In my honest opinion, I say that FPS games should just go back to, like, the regular lobbies, you know? Back then, okay. you could join a lobby, scope out the lobby, see who's, like, the freaking best players and stuff. If they were a little too good for your level, you could leave. If you okay, that's true. I kind of feel that. I kind of feel that. No, I could see that. Because if I joined a lobby, I don't trust game matchmaking to that level. You can do this still. Oh, never mind. Though. I think he's saying it depends on the game. Don't be try hard in Fall Guys, but be try hards in FPS. All right, well, I, you can make that argument about anything. Freaking universe of the top 12 Call of Duty Masters after you win one game. I feel like there should always be that option to stay goes. if you want to stay or leave that. if you want to leave. So it's honestly just like gaming is just honestly a huge sweat fest. And that rounds back to like the ultimate question of this video. Did streamers really ruin gaming? What? <laughs> How do we get back to this? He's going to say no. In my honest opinion, yes. In the actual video, he said no, but he cut to his twin. Yes now, on the next day. He had to think about it. I a thousand percent believe that streamers in esports ruined gaming. I didn't even because there is no reason bro. why people should be sweating at a game where you literally farm cabbages. How okay, so we're just, we're back on the game now. How do you even sweat in farming simulator? Look it How? up. Let me know in the comments. Do y'all think streamers <laughs> What happened? What happened there? Why did, he, why did he go to his alter ego? What? This is the start of an ARG. Flash pro players ruin gaming? Or like, what's your guys' take on this whole situation? Let me know. <laughs> Maybe he'll respond. And that's facts. <laughs> I need the, and that's facts for the soundboard. That's really good. I like that. The 1% of streamers starts at 100 viewers. Isn't that crazy, dude?